Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, it's a map stravaganza. Plus, big updates from RDO, uh, Google Drive, Google Drive, and the Nook, and all that. Plus, what? Winter is coming. What? On iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces from Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with clients and colleagues anywhere. You can share the same screen and see each other face-to-face -face with HD video conferencing, even from an iPad. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code iPad. And by Lantronics, maker of the X-Print server. Print from your iPad, iPhone, or any iOS device to virtually any printer. For more information, visit xprintserver.com slash twit and enter the code HOLIDAY2012 to receive 20% off your next order. And buy the new Slingbox, which can turn your mobile device into a television. With the new Slingbox, you can watch high-def TV on your smartphone, laptop, or tablet anywhere there's an internet connection. Check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. Hello, 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 Sarah Lane. Is winter really coming? You know, I just came from the land down under. Uh, where women flow and, and men, men thunder. thunder. And no, they blunder. Can't you hear the thunder? That's the runder. Better run. Better take cover. To cover. Yeah. Because it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> it's summer down there. Isn't that weird? It's, well, I'll tell you what's really weird. Magnets, how do they work? <laughs> I don't know about magnets, but what's weird is he doesn't the, get any of my jokes. the Christmas carols yeah. and the wreath, and it's summertime. It's weird to have Christmas in the summertime. It's, it's, I'm sure Australians are used to it, but uh, it, for me, it was a little odd. You know, but I, you know, all the, all the Christmas yeah. iconography involves snow and winter, right? Dickens and Christmas Carol and sure. Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. What a bunch of weirdos. How do they uh, deal? It's always been that way. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, so we well, you know there's there's quite quite a few parts of California that are also that's a good warm point. and sunny. It's not so different from LA in, in December. Yeah, remember at the beginning of Almost Famous, they have that beginning shot where it's yeah, the, I love the that. chipmunks and they're in San Diego. And it's and kind it's, of odd. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's supposed to be odd. Right, it's a really good it's movie. It's disorienting. We should watch the that. The chipmunk movie. I loved that. Not that. Yeah. I'll, what was that? Chipmunks two. Called oh, it was something really cast, bad. They were cast away on an island. No, but it was, had a terrible name. It was called. Oh, well, anyway. How matter. long is this show? <laughs> it's pretty long. All hey, right. so it's iPad today, everybody. <laughs> Leo's drinking whiskey, so you know how... And you're acting weird, which is kind of strange. I was trying to be normal, but now if you're not going to maintain, why should I? What do you mean I'm acting weird? <laughs> you, what's the magnet thing about? Explain oh, that. It's a, it's a insane clown posse thing. Okay, it's now, a, you're, just now you're just talking. Now you're just talking. You guys... Nonsense. Well, Insane clown posse. It's a thing. It's a song. Chipwrecked. Chipwrecked. The Squeakwool. That's what it was. The Squeakwool. The Chipmunks 2 was called the Squeakwool. And the third one was Chipwrecked. I don't think there's a third one. Leo's correct. Okay. All Carson right. knows he's Pipe got small down children. down over there. This isn't your show. All right. What are we doing? Hey, it's so... <laughs> Leo and I are recording this a little bit later than we usually do because we're pre-recording the show because I'm actually going to be gone the week that the show will, will air. Going so to France. Yeah, what they going said, though, about the last time we did this is that we should do it this time all the time because they, there's something a little more relaxed. You let your hair down. We're just a little more relaxed this time of day. You think so? Yeah, I like it. Okay. I'm enjoying it. It's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. The it's night shift. Yeah, yeah. We could call it iPad. After hours. After hours. iPad after dark. Mm, I like it. I A D. I A D. That's like an airport, right? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Dulles? Is it Dulles? I think, I think it's it Dulles. is. I think I'm doing a stop over there. That's why I'm thinking of it. So, Leo, we were thinking okay, so what are we going to talk about? What's hot in iPad land right now? 
And last week, which is actually an episode that we shot yesterday, but to everybody who's watching this on demand, it was last week's show. You, sh you shouldn't try to explain that because that's very confusing. Well, but, but hey, all right. I'm confused. You're I not confused. Here. You're right. Last week seems yesterday. like yesterday, it does doesn't seem it? Like yesterday. Yeah. Next week is going to seem like tomorrow. So last time on episode 125, we I talked a little bit your about. your clothes anyway. Because that would be confusing. If I didn't? Yeah. That would just mean I wasn't changing Do you remember my on Tech TV? I did two shows a day on Tech TV, Call for Help and the Screen Savers. Yes. And Call for Help, I would wear V-neck sweaters and very conservative button-down stuff. And then, the, and then the Screen Savers, I would wear Hawaiian shirts. And I'm convinced that the reason they did that is so that people would think it was two different people. <laughs> they really thought, because I'm doing two shows, and they're almost back-to-back, -back, they thought, well, we're going to have Leo dress down on one show. And wear V-neck sweaters. It's just variety. It's and people then, love and variety. And then we'll make them a hip swinger. Yeah, you were hip, a real hip swinger. Oh, I'll I tell you it what. Didn't work, did it? Yeah. Oh, Hawaiian shirts. You know, nothing says hip swinger <laughs> like your bowling shoes well, and your Hawaiian shirts. Unfortunately, it was the same head. <laughs> right. <laughs> they couldn't. They knew. They knew. The jig is up. The jig was. It was up. the same guy. Yeah. It didn't really. Work. Each show. Do you want to know what we're talking about today? What is the theme? As you think you said Max Stravaganza. I said Map Stravaganza. E easy for you. So, sort of like Max Stravaganza, but it's totally different. Easy for you. Try to, to say. breathe. Just try say to it, breathe. Say it again. <laughs> Map Stravaganza. Map Stravaganza. It's okay. a word. That's not a word. It could be. Never, maps. never was a word. How about this? It's a maps showdown. Okay. A showdown between <laughs> three maps, and the reason. How about this? Mapapalooza. Okay, that's fine too. You would you prefer that? I don't care. Mapapalooza, Jeff. Make sure it says Mapapalooza, real, <laughs> real big on the screen right now. Thank you very much. So the reason is because last time we were talking about how that poor manager got fired over maps at Apple. He it's did, not just sad. Scott Forstall, but the, the Williamson guy got yeah. fired as well. Yeah. So there's two people. Yeah, and they, they say Eddie Q is just, I, I'm slashing. I don't like these guys. Well, They're not know, doing stuff right. When they fired Scott Forstall, you could say that was a fall guy. Like, they, they picked somebody to take the fall for the failure. Because sure. obviously, right. in a company that size, it's not one but person. But then they also said Forstall was just hard to deal with. Yeah. People didn't like him. But then they fired the guy who was actually managing the maps uh, program as well. Mm -hmm. it got, I guess it's more than the fall guy at this point. They really are trying to get it together. They even, as I mentioned yeah, uh, last week, almost said yesterday, as I mentioned last week, they even went to TomTom, Tom, the, the map provider, and said, can we use your points of interest? We've been using Yelp and it's not been so great. Mm -hmm. So I think I am encouraged that Apple is really trying to get it together. In the meanwhile, until Apple does and Google comes out with its map app, we have some choices for it. Yeah, them. we do. In fact, Nokia Maps, <laughs> don't laugh. This is new. It this is, is new. new. No, I'm not laughing. You know why? Because I think Nokia actually is a very strong contender. They, they That's what Bing uses. Microsoft uses uh -huh. for Bing. Yeah. Um, I think they are probably, in some regards, as good as Google Maps. They certainly have been working as hard at it. Well, let's see if you like the look of it. Yeah, uh, let me see. The I, look I of it is actually it called Here. So if you're looking for it in the App Store, it's it's Here Maps. Uh, it's made by Nokia. And, okay. It's That's okay, but is there satellite or anything else? Is that it? Um, what do you mean, is that it? Well, I mean... So we're lo well, we're looking... I know what I'm looking at. That's Petaluma. I recognize the river. Yeah, it is Petaluma. A so what we have little, is we have map a... view, we have satellite okay, view. Okay, good. All right. You got public transport view. And that's that can, nice. That can be helpful. That's something that's missing in the Apple Maps. Live traffic view as well for anybody who's commuting and is interested in that Everybody's sort of got thing. that now. Yeah. This doesn't look vector-based to me. In fact, it kind of has that like... Oh, you're right. Just, it's redrawing each yeah, time. Just, yeah, it's just slightly kind of... It kind of okay. has that like... It's not so good. Almost a tiny bit, I don't know, muffled or whatever. Um, and I'm not quite sure. I haven't figured out how you change the colors i don't why think would you want to change the colors well because to me this is it's too bland a little bit too yeah beige. that's actually the problem i have with apple maps yeah. maybe it's just because i was so used to google maps uh but what's interesting is that here's here's kind of where it gets wonky is so we're looking at petaluma obviously because it's geolocating me here yeah but down here on the bottom what is that well, business this, cards. this is supposed to be... Those are business cards, but it says you're in San Francisco. Exactly, because the last time I fired it up, I ah. was. So it was stuff that was near me a while ago, but it's like, how do I update? And it's, you know, in the Apple metaphor, you should be able to scroll that, shouldn't you? Yeah. It doesn't look like that that, that goes slides back and forth. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. weird. It's a little bit weird, yeah. definitely. So, all right, well... And in fact, okay, this is... The, That's San Francisco. I recognize Golden Gate Park. Well, yeah, because now I'm back in San Francisco because I 
Oh, clicked you tapped on something. Pope Fine Builders. Yeah. So if I go, okay, well, welcome to Save a Map Area Collections. I mean, really, where's that little arrow? You know, I'm disappointed because oh, if you go. look at right. Nokia Maps on the web, they uh -huh. have a spectacular 3D view. They really have some very innovative stuff. This does not show any of that stuff. No, it's really, uh, it doesn't seem fully featured to me. You can However, course, you can, of course, do a, a route. Presentation alone uh, aside, Nokia does have good mapping data. Mm -hmm. They bought uh, one of the, did they bought, is, I can never remember, is it Telenaf that they bought? But they bought one of the big, the two big mapping companies. And um, they've, I think they've always had good turn, turn by turn. So I would imagine, and isn't that what people are complaining about with Apple Maps? It's not the presentation, but the accuracy. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what people yeah. are complaining about, which again... Navtech. They bought Navtech. Thank you. Navtech. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good call. So this is Nokia Maps. It's, you know, it's free. It's completely free. Uh, you can uh, you can grab it in the App Store, and it's it's okay. I haven't used it because it hasn't been out uh, long enough for iOS to know if how it, accurate it exactly. Is. Yeah, it, yeah. But my guess is it's going to be good. Nokia has always had good. Uh, well, data. I hope so. I just I kind of look at it and it's like, eh, this isn't very compelling. I'd use it if I had if I if I had to if I didn't have other good options. All right, let's throw it out because you do have good options. I do, yeah. Let's and in see what fact, else. one of uh, our other options is Waze, and you've been singing Waze's praises for a long time now. <laughs> It's hard to say. Waze is praises. I love Waze. Now, Waze is not gorgeous either. In fact, it looks kind of funky. But what it does, it does is it's crowdsourcing traffic information, road hazard information. It'll tell you when there's a police officer on the road ahead of you. Uh, I, I think, and it does a very good job, in my experience, of routing. In particular, it will use uh, the road conditions ahead to reroute you. So... I'll give you an example. I was driving home from the Oakland airport. This is the first time I really used Waze. This was a few months ago. And it said, uh-oh, the traffic is stopped on the 880. Mm -hmm. And it went through some back route that got me onto the highway I was going to, eliminated that traffic slowdown. I was blown away. I, I, I use Waze all the time. No, this is something that I could do. You know, if I'm leaving That's the Petaluma, reporting service. Right, yeah. and I'm going, oh, no, this is really backed up. I can even say, you can be as specific as, you know, is it moderate traffic or, I mean, are people st standing still? Yep. Is it happening in my lane? You know, could you <clears> take a picture? Now, you might say, oh, you shouldn't be doing that while you're driving. But they have set it up pretty cool. Now, not on the iPad so much, but on the iPhone. You can wave your hand over the iPhone. So I have the iPhone mounted on a dashboard. You wave your hand over the iPhone, and then it speaks to you and says, what would you, you know, and you can say, report traffic. You do it all with voice, so you don't actually have to be tapping or even looking at the Waze application. So uh, they are cognizant of the dangers of spending a lot of time fiddling while you're driving. I think it's quite good. Yeah, they have a lot of... I love it. The, it's free. The, yeah, isn't that great? That's the best part. Now, and, you know, it, it does look a little cartoonish. It's terrible. It and does. the other negative is it's re it's live data, so it's using your three or four G connection all the time. Mm -hmm. So you may run up against bandwidth caps, things like that. So things are slowed down to two miles per hour. Soundwave in our chat room also points out there's a glimpse light functionality. You can live share your position. So I could say, Sarah, I'm going to be late for iPad today. Here's where I am. I just think Waze is fantastic. Waze is great, and again, it's free. So here's you here's, also it's gamified. You get points as oh, you start sharing stuff. I you got get, I got my first two hundred yeah, points for making a on, new friend. Earlier. Exactly, it shares it on Facebook, and as you get more points, you can get better icons for yourself. So you yeah. can see the other Wazers on the highway. Now it's not going to be useful in an area where it's not heavily used. So it's best in big metros uh, here in the Bay Area and in LA both. <laughs> million well thousands of ways users so it's oh, yeah. very popular so the data is very good but i imagine is if you got into you know the cornfields of nebraska it'd be a lot less useful this is a this is kind of fun they have like the little ways moods um and you have to unlock a certain amount of points before exactly. you get certain moods you get better moods yeah and now so, some people say this is so silly i mean it's a traffic app right it's a it's a maps app why would we want any of uh, this it's pretty fun well it can you yeah. know who it's for it's not for the casual user it's for the commuter it's for somebody who in fact Waze learns when you go the that same route all point. the time mm -hmm. it really is for the commuter and if you are a commuter you sh and you're not using Waze yet you absolutely should I leave Waze as I drive fired up all the time so that I can help other Wazers with traffic conditions even if you don't do the reporting just how fast you're going on the highway mm -hmm. is reported back to Waze so it that's how it knows if there's congestion up ahead and I if anyone is listening to this and saying this all seems a little weird um, you can actually go to the my ways area um 
and you can go invisible, you know, if right. you're about to rob a bank or something and you just don't want anybody to know where you are. Uh, and well, you don't, because you don't it feel says like who you are. It yeah. puts your icon on the map. And, oh, yeah. And people could chat with you. Right. That I don't encourage, but people can actually send you messages saying, hey, Sarah. So actually that's happened to me because my car says Twit TV on the license plate. People all the time. As I'm driving by my red Mustang, they go, love the show, Leo, through Waze. Really? Yes. That's pretty cool. I'm telling you, this thing is so cool. W-A-Z-E. Yes. Uh, Waze.com for more information. Uh, but this app is great. It's really free. cute, too. Yeah, it's extremely social. It's free. You do have to get used to the map's look and feel a little bit. It's a little cartoony, yeah. It's a little cartoony, but it is accurate. So there you go. One of the apps that I think is absolutely the best when it comes to maps, and it is not free and it is not cheap either, is TomTom. Tom. Yeah, and they've been saying all along, hey, we don't have problems like uh, Apple does with its Maps app, even though Apple's using our data, so it must be Apple's fault. Well... Do you like TomTom? Tom? Have you used it? Yeah, absolutely love it. 50 but bucks. 50 bucks for the U.S. version alone. Yeah, I know. It's not even like the whole world is $50. Yeah. U.S. version is 50 I think... Um, By the way, that's down. It was 100 when it came out. You're kidding. No. On iOS? Yeah. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got the U.S. version here. You, uh, you haven't said anything about my shoes today. They're very nice. They're yellow. And do you know why I'm wearing slippers? Because these are you yellow wooden like shoes. The Netherlands. I do like that. This was brought to me by a Dutch person. Obviously. Um, they're slippers because I got wet today because it was it's we almost had an inch of rain today. Did you know that? Yes, I watched it from and, my living room. And I walked to work. Oh, yeah. And I did the little thing that Gene Kelly did in Singing in the Rain. This I kicked the puddles. This doesn't explain why you're wearing the... My shoes are wet and oh, my socks are wet. Oh, no, and that's how you catch cold. Yeah, so yeah. I apologize you, in advance. You know, we've talked about this before because you've actually worn them on the show before. Because I told you what they call clogs in the Netherlands. What? Klumpen. <laughs> I went to a clog-making factory and I learned that... But I have the ago. wooden versions of these. Would you like to wear them? Yes. Okay. I don't. You, they will fit me. Would you, no, they're for my feet. So, no. I don't want to wear them. I'll break my neck. Hey, let's go back to TomTom. Tom. Let's. This is a great, great, great Maps app. And again... How I, about updates? So that's a good question from Web1987. Um, once ooh. you spend 50 bucks, is it automatically updated forever? Or? Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes. That's good. No, the only thing that will be an extra purchase once you've actually downloaded this, and again... The whole idea, you know, you might say, well, why is it, you know, the U.S. is different than Greece, is different than South Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, because these are actually maps that you're downloading to your iPad. You don't actually need an internet connection to use them. I mean, you're obviously going to need an internet connection sporadically to update them. But the maps are on the iPad. That's, that's right. really important. So online, offline, very, very right. helpful, especially if you're in an area that's going to be in and out of service. You just don't want to worry about it. But... If you want a traffic uh, uh, add-on, yeah, yeah, there's a subscription. One month is another two ninety nine, or a year is is twenty bucks, and that's it. Just it's kind of a you know a traffic. <laughs> Here's your wooden Liz, shoes, Liz. Ms. Lane. Well, I can actually put my real shoes inside the wooden shoes because they're that big. <laughs> This is great. We match. This is so fun. You know, it is a, a really important distinction to make. And if you're looking for a GPS <laughs> app, the question really to ask is offline or online. For instance, Google Maps was online. It didn't work offline. You had to download as you were going. Um, now, many Maps apps are kind of a hybrid. They allow you to cache. The new Google Maps, for instance, on Android, allows you to cache mm -hmm. an area. So you're going to Paris, you would cache that whole radius. Exactly. And that means even if you're offline, you'd still be able to get directions in right. Paris. Not traffic information, but directions. Um, the, the, my favorite GPS app, Motion X GPS, mm -hmm. also is an online map app that lets you cache ahead of time. So if you think ahead and you're on Wi-Fi, you can get the maps and save them. Exactly. If you like TomTom, Tom, you'd probably just buy the France edition. Yeah, which and then, is probably another 50 bucks, right? Well, yeah, no, that's, yeah. you don't, if you buy one, you don't get them all. Right, right. You have to, you have to buy them separately. But it is fully featured. It's really, really nice. If I want to navigate to, uh, earlier I actually put in uh, Bloomingdale's at the mall is one of my favorite spots. So if I wanted to navigate there from Petaluma, I've got my little route. It says current route involves toll roads. You want to avoid the toll roads? Now, you might want to. But they, I say, you're out of luck nah. in the Bay Area. I think you're stuck. <laughs> well, I could do San Mateo, I, I guess. I guess you'd be driving a that's long crazy. way. That's crazy. You wouldn't yeah. have it. That's not even yeah. worth the money. So Burning I say, nah, more gas I don't want to avoid that. Road. 
exactly. So this is the, you know, the most direct route. Tells me how long, how many kilometers. Obviously, I could change that to miles. We started off with the South African Navigator and kilometers, so there's a little bit of stuff that you have to do even for the U.S. version, but that's okay. I would go, okay, okay go ahead and say done. Um, and then uh, Homegirl's going to just sort of walk me through it. I say Homegirl because I have a choice of, oops, I have a choice of... Um, a lot of different... This is one of the things I've lo always loved about the TomTom Tom standalone what? GPS devices, custom voices. I have oh, yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. I, I mean, it's they have really have celebrity fun. voices. Yeah. But you have to buy them, right? You have to buy the voices, but you yeah. can go into advanced voices, English, uh, Samantha and Tom are my English voices, but then if you go into basic voices, I, I actually started with, I started with Doreen, uh, who was speaking Afrikaans, so I was like... What in the But heck? it's not English. No, it's So it's not just an accent. She's actually not speaking in English. Right. Oh, yeah, and I was like, well, that's that navigation is not <clears throat> helpful. But you Why? have Is that was that the default? It was. Yeah, when I downloaded it. Oh, that's it. not that's a little rough edge. Yeah, well, exactly, because I I mean I figured it out eventually, but at first I was like, what is the problem? <laughs> what language? You have reached so, your destination. Oh, I like her. So I went ahead and, She's and very sweet. well, yeah, see, because I yes. like I like when British people yeah, talk to me. Too. But you have a lot of choices here and you have a lot of, you know, you that's have a, a lot good of voice. You have a lot of different languages because of course, if you're in the US and you're downloading the TomTom Tom US version, very good chance that you actually want to hear the directions in a different language because I you're really, here from somewhere else. There is an API, and you can, and I want to do this, record. They tell you what you need to record, voices, and make it available for TomTom. Tom. I would like to have the Leo Laporte TomTom Tom voice. Would, what, what, what do you think, gang? Would, would you like to hear Toll that? Toll charge. Turn around when possible. Here, then turn left. Hey, there's a toll charge. So turn around if you can, otherwise you're gonna have to turn left. <laughs> Wouldn't you like that on your on your thing? I guess. I had Dennis Hopper for a while. Did you? Oh, it was weird. He he'd say things like, "You're here, but why would anyone want to go here?" <laughs> I'm not kidding. And then there was somebody has made a Glados. Remember Glados from the Portal game? No. And she'd lie to you. She'd say, oh, turn that. left instead of when it was supposed well, to be turned right. Well, that's not cool. No. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like a good idea. No. Yeah. But those are fun. I wonder if, I bet you could still get those for the app, too. Probably. Because, I mean, they already have them in the library. Well, let's see, if, let's see if they'll even tell you what your voices are. GLaDOS was great. Before. I could do the Russian. Oh, yeah. Go, go that not. way. <laughs> in Soviet Union. So I get Wallace and Gromit, Homer Simpson, See? Marge Simpson, Mr. Burns, and that's it. Well, can you play a sample, any of yeah. yeah. Uh, your attention, please. After 500 meters, See, that's keep fake right. Wallace and Gromit. Crosswinds permitting. Maybe not. Or How about that Simpsons? Let's go see. straight on. That way you'll stay out of trouble. Then you have reached your destination. Isn't that great? I'm now, so proud of you. Isn't that great? Who's a good driver? It weighs. You're it... a good driver. Are you done? Are you done, Marge? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it wears on you. After I don't. A while. Yeah, I kind of just want to point. Dennis a. Hopper really started to wear on me after a while. You know, Leo, I, I have something to. Um, I think I should probably admit right now. And that is turn-by-turn -turn directions have always felt a little bit like cheating to me, and I actually study maps before I go. Cheating? Mm hmm It's cheating? A little bit. <laughs> hey, I'm not saying I haven't used it, but I, lo I look at some of this stuff, and I'm just like, you know what? That's why people don't know where they are. I'm going to back you up on that, because I think it is That's very dangerous. That's why people don't know where north is. Not even that. What happens, and I've had this happen because I use turn-by-turn -turn all the time. Mm -hmm. I use turn-by-turn -turn to get home sometimes well, from, work, from work. Well, that's pathetic, but... Okay. Continue. And at, sometimes when I'm walking, I'll use turn by turn. Well, you know, that's what they have it for. Walking. I know. Yeah. Leo, turn left here. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes Leo, I just hear that. Left yeah, there. turn. He's very such good. A good <laughs> such a good boy. I like that. No, but uh, it it somehow disables your ability to distinguish what you're doing on the road, and I think it is somewhat dangerous. For instance, uh, especially freeway off ramps and on ramps. Mm -hmm. um, I think GPS actually is deadly, is dangerous. I think you're better to use maps. You really are. There's a certain Thank you. too reliant on turn that. by turn. If I'm if I'm really confused as to where I am, mm -hmm. hey, I know it comes in handy, and I know a lot of you do a lot of driving to unfamiliar places all the time. So of course it makes sense. I'm just saying. Do you have a Thomas's guide in your back seat? You mm -hmm. know the big book with all the maps. No, in it? I'm not. I used to. 
I don't do dead tree maps anymore, but I used to too. Oh, I loved that. And my dad would get mad if he couldn't find it in my trunk. How are you ever going to get from point A to point B? <laughs> you had a good dad. You need a map. That's a good man. Right. Yeah. Taught you how to read maps. Yeah, and it stuck with me to the point where I'm like, who needs this turn-by-turn -turn in any sense? Mm -hmm. Hey, so Leo, uh, we mentioned Nokia maps, known as Here Maps in the App Store. If you're searching for them, well, Nokia would, it would, it would still bring it up. We got Waze, and we've got TomTom. Tom. So it's sort of the cheap, ver well, the free versions, and then the, right. the more fully featured, serious, all offline plus online. In general, version. that's the case. When you get an offline map program, that's the ones that cost money because you're downloading. And they the entire also collection. they also take up a lot of space. They do. That's something to consider too. They do. I, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of issues. I didn't mention this in the last show because I don't know. I forgot to. But my iPad Mini, when I took it out of the box, it's like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to start it off as a new iPad or do you want to restore? And I thought, well, I really want to compare it to my full-size iPad, so I'll restore so that they have pretty much, you know, it's the same thing. Well, I have a 64 gigabyte iPad, and I have a 16 gigabyte iPad mini, mm. and so I sort of, you know, said like... So you like, thought that would work? Well, no, I, of course, I know that it doesn't work, but I just didn't think about it. Right. Because with a 64 gig, I mean, even with all the apps that I have, I've never actually run out of room. Right. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do, because I don't store a lot of videos on this. It's but all probably apps. you had more than 16 gigabytes on there. Well, I have a I'm lot thinking. more. Yeah. <laughs> I have a lot more. But so you were kind of surprised that that Well, I was just sort of like, what's the... Oh, my gosh. Oh my. Of course. <laughs> I can't download any of this stuff. Why didn't we buy you a 64 gigabyte? That's the problem. Your boss is cheap. Yeah. Cheap. Should have bought you a 64 gigabyte. Sheesh. Well, it doesn't matter. It's, it really doesn't matter. It, it all worked out in the end. But it's reminding me of this because I realize now on my 16 gigabyte iPad Mini... A lot mini, of it was maps. Well, a lot of it, well, and games and all sorts of stuff, but it's like, I know Photos. how you all feel when you're getting to the point where it's yeah. like, what do, you know, I want to be you really to, selective about the stuff that yeah. I download. You can't just download everything, even right. if money isn't an object, because right. you just don't have the room. So something like TomTom, Tom, you'd want to take that into consideration as well. We how will, big, did you check how big is the, uh, if you get the whole North America map, is that pretty big? Well, it's not even all of North America, it's just the U.S., but I mean, is it a gig or two? It might be a gig or two. I, that's chat a good question. Will know. Would, you know, you, would you check for a well, chat? Well, you know what I can do? I can look up exactly how much. Because uh, you have the U.S. maps on there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I downloaded it for. I, by the way, you bought me maps for fifty dollars yesterday. Are you kidding? No, I'm serious. What do you think? I got I it for free. <laughs> it says size is one point three gigabytes. Oh, wow. there you go. One point three two. Yeah. So there you have it. I have sixteen point one gigs available of. 41.1 and 41.1 gigs used on my 64 gig iPad. And I have, how many apps do I have? I think last I checked, it was like about 400. So there you go. <laughs> you have 400 apps. Yeah, wow. it's, it's a little insane. But hey, you know, I got to do research for right. my job or I won't seem like I'm prepared. Speaking of prepared, if you feel like, hey, you went through some of this stuff a little too quickly, what was the place where I can find more about ways and, and all that good stuff? Don't worry, you can always visit our show page at twit.tv slash IPT. That is where all of our episodes live. And by the way, you know, we took a Thanksgiving week off. So we've had a lot of feedback from people saying, where was episode 125? By the time you're watching this, hopefully you realize that we just took the week off. We didn't actually skip. There's the no show missing hasn't been episode. canceled. No, 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 no. no missing episode. I probably should have explained that a little bit better. So, sorry to anybody who was confused. And quick reminder that normally we record the show on Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. We're shooting a few of the next shows at kind of funny times uh, to accommodate a little vacation I'm going to be taking. Uh, so, thanks to everybody who's watched us That's live why after hours. I'm buying a Ford with the new lane keeping application. Lane keeping application? Lane keeper. So that, that way that you I won't go to France. Does that mean I just sit in the trunk? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kept. <laughs> You're kept. I'm keeping lane. <laughs> That's what they call it, lane keeping. Well, what does that mean? It keeps it you doesn't... in the lane. Oh. But I, but I didn't realize, but I was thinking, that's what I need. Right. A Sarah lane keeper. Yeah. Yeah. You just, well, you just hey, we, threatened to cut me off. We did it, by the way. What? We gave away the iPad. I'm excited. So let me talk about GoToMeeting from uh, Citrix. Okay. 
this is that great app that uh, for many years I used just because it had the best screen sharing. It's very fast, Mac or PC, easy to start meetings, easy to hold meetings, to show people your keynote presentation, your PowerPoint presentation, but they just keep making it better. They added HD faces so you could see the people you're meeting with using high def video. They made it work on the iPad. You can even present from the iPad now. Works on an iPhone too. So it means that you can walk around, you can travel, you don't have to bring a big old laptop with you and you can go to meetings. Meeting is believing. I want you to try it free for 30 days. Visit gotomeeting.com, use the promo code iPad, you got 30 days free, and then get the app for the iPhone, get the app for the iPad, and hit the road. I mean, look at her. She's at a coffee shop. It uses the built-in camera on the iPad to show you. It uses the headphones and uh, the, the microphone on the iPad, so you don't even need a phone with you. Of course, it does support telephony. In fact, part of the deal with GoToMeeting is you get a free telephony bridge as well as the VoIP uh, go to meeting audio and video. Really fantastic. Very easy to set up a meeting. Now, we uh, did ask people to tweet who they would like to meet with for the holidays, mm -hmm. where in the world, uh, and why. You know, like Santa's little helper because, in the North Pole. Because I always felt like I was such exactly. a good helper. And, and <clears throat> we asked you to use the hashtag oh. uh, iPad... Uh, Today free. To iPad today free. Yes, all mm. one word. So hundreds of tweets came in, mm. and the Millions folks at Citrix went through them. Probably. And now they did this at random. So this is do not feel that this is in any way an invalidation of your clever tweet. Right. But oh, and this is the iPad we uh, we gave away, and our winner is Rob Hopkins. And the tweet. Congratulations! Was, Isn't that great? And yes. listen to the tweet. I would love to have the kids meet Santa up in the North Pole via go to meeting. Hashtag iPad today free. <gasps> oh, isn't that great? And that is what I call creative. Isn't that good? So thank you so much, Rob Hopkins, for playing our game. And congratulations. I hope you enjoy your new iPad. Thanks to the folks at Citrix and go to meeting. It's right here. And oh, you know, we're gonna send you an email and let me know if you want us to autograph that or not. We could. It's already engraved with, you know, I congratulations, iPad Today winner. But we, we could personalize a little bit. Sure. Personally. Yeah. So congratulations to you, Rob Hopkins. Congratulations. Isn't that nice? You. I just think that's so wonderful. Oh, isn't it great? And I great? love their tweet. It just was hysterical. Just the best. The best. Even though, you know, it's chosen at random, so you don't even have to be creative, but why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Because you want to stand out and you want to be cool. Absolutely. You don't want it all to be They didn't not. have to, but they did. But they did. And for that, I love them. We salute you. Salute. Yeah. Salute. Hey, so um, we've got some serious app updates this week. Okay. Starting with Erdio. 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 You know, we, um, I talked with Nick Bilton and Baratunde on Twit about this. Because okay. you know that I use Spotify. Yes. I was an RDO user and I kind of abandoned it. RDO was created by Nicholas Zenstrom and the gang who did Skype mm -hmm. and Ma, and not, uh, what was it called? That video, uh, video uh, sharing thing that they did. I can never remember it. Oh. It was kind of a flop, remember? Oh. It was the future flop. We know they're, they're working on video now. They're go well, that's interesting, isn't it? They're going to yeah. do video like they do RDO. Yeah, but it's... Anyway, anyway. Nick and, 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 and Baratunde said they preferred RDO not only because it's got great, better social sharing than Spotify, but they like the interface better. Do you agree for the iPad? Oh, absolutely. You're an RDO fan, too. I am. And the thing I'm is... I'm thinking of shifting over from Spotify. Now, I mean... <sighs> I always feel like, you know, I, I talk about RDO a lot, but I also just really like my music and it, it does what I need it to do. I don't think anybody needs both. You know, you're a no, Spotify one or user other. or you're yeah. an RDO. Yeah, Ten, they're both the same price, 10 bucks a month for exactly. the full version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, want, if you want mobile access, which, I mean, I don't even know why you really have it if you didn't have mobile access, but you, you have some options there. But Spotify is just the, it's the bigger service. It's got right. many more users. Um, they're, you know, making a lot more money. So I Do they worry... have more songs? Who has more songs? No, it's basically exactly same. the same. Okay. Yeah, they have access to pretty much the same right. stuff. You know, back at the, you know, a year ago, there was a little bit like, ooh, Spotify will have this and Ardio right. won't. But for the most part, it's, it's, they're all getting the same releases at the same time. I've always thought that the Ardio app would not only had more, uh, or the Ardio service had more of a social experience, but the app was just better. What's nice about this now is that it actually mimics the Mac app, which I, I use exclusively when I'm, when I'm using RDO on, on my MacBook. It looks a lot like uh, the Mac app. Now, 
the app before on the iPad was nice, but it was a very different look and feel yeah. than the rest of the experience, either the web experience, the Mac experience. So on iOS now, for the iPad and the iPhone, it looks a lot like the other app that you might be using at the same time. Because I'm just sort of accessing RDO wherever I am. So you've got heavy rotation. So this is uh, the stuff that folks are listening to based on who you follow and the, and the kind of music that you're interested in. Uh, and if you, you go ahead and, and you click this little guy to, to open the left-hand nav. Recent activity. This is actually really helpful for me because I follow a lot of my friends. My friend Laura. This looks like Ping was supposed to be. Yeah, I know. This is why, <laughs> this is why I always say Apple should buy RDO. I yeah. mean, it's like they do everything right. Yeah. Uh, my friend Laura listens to a lot of music more than anybody I know. She's always making new playlists. So she's got a November 2012, and this is all the stuff that, you know, really caught her ear this last month. So I can go ahead and follow that or just listen. Uh, and a variety of, you know, people who are listening to albums, I might go, oh, you know, cool. Cap Watkins is listening to Of Monsters and Men. Yeah, I heard, Love they, were, them. heard they were pretty good. Oh, you don't know them? They're go great. Go ahead and listen. Well, you I'm, know I'm them, just pretending. obviously. Yeah. I'm just saying. They're if one I, of my favorite groups. Yeah. Now. And, if, and if you listen and you're like, ooh, this is really awesome. Now, totally Dog Killer them. says Spotify has 18 million songs and RDO only has 12 million. Isn't that true? If that's true, that's it's, it's never 50 been. 50 percent difference. Well, if that's true, that's never. Something that I've really, I won't play too much of, Dirty Paws. Uh, that's never been anything I've run across that's an issue. You know, I'd like to know... Hmm. What's missing? Well, yeah, exactly what's missing. Yeah. And is it a lot of, like, back catalog stuff right. that I'm just not accessing? Because for a while, I was comparing the two. I haven't lately, so it might be, you know, if it's, like, soundtracks and compilations that RDO doesn't now, have. Uh, I've noticed that uh, with a few bands, it's stuff like CD Baby integration. So there'll uh, be bands that are on CD Baby but aren't on so audio. So the indie bands that aren't right. signed. CD Baby is a for indie. That, by the way, that wasn't just a strange voice that appeared out of nowhere. Uh, That's our producer, Chad Johnson. That's Chad. That's correct. Hi, Chad. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Chad. You know what's really interesting? What? Um, how much this looks like the new iTunes, which did or did not come out this week. <laughs> It, it's so fantastic. How are we going to, like... I don't know. I don't... I mean, that's Supposedly, just really weird. Supposedly, we should doing. explain that we're recording this a couple of days early. Yeah. And I actually, it, it may come out tomorrow as we air this. this no, they, we're they airing have this next week. We, <laughs> the new iTunes, There's which came out... There's a time and space conti uh, continuum know. glitch on our very show. So they... If uh, there's anything, my it's Apple has still says on their website it's going to be out in November. <laughs> right. Well... We got so till Saturday. I'm or thinking, last Saturday. I'm thinking it came out. Okay. And it looks exactly like the, well, the RDA. Right. It's uh it's it's sort of a fact, um briefly I hey, thought that was iTunes eleven. <laughs> you were showing that. Well this is a, I wish iTunes looked a little bit more like this. It sure would be nice. Anyway, I I could go through all of the features. I mean the features haven't actually changed. Um there, I mean there's actually a, a few new features. You can you can schedule music that you want to hear later, that sort of thing. But for the most part, it's a really nice design update. It just it, I, it I, unifies I, the experience. <sighs> what? What's wrong? It's so, it's so I don't know Spotify or audio, which I should use. You know, I would love it if people would email and tell me. What, what which they do? use and which is better, you know. And there's also Mog and Rhapsody. There are there are a number of competing services, and but now that Spotify does have an iPad app, mm -hmm. it's not so. You know, for a long time it was RDO because they had they were the only ones with the and iPad. And I would say, why would you choose Spotify? Right. You got to hear music on right. your iPad, right? It's challenging. You, well, I mean, it's 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 up to you. I love the social. I think it is prettier. And I think the social is better implemented than on Spotify. Well, also, you can make a collection out of albums, right, on RDO. And Spotify is all about playlists. It's playlists focused. And yeah. that can be weird when yeah. you're like, no, I just want a collection of albums. That's, I don't want to make a playlist. Right. So just, I think that Spotify will probably figure that out. One thing that RDO is doing, and I thought this was a little bit curious, this is actually um, a, a developer app um, that they are allowing uh, uh, developers to use the API for. Um, this is, was made with the API, it's called eavesdrop, and what you can do, I haven't figured out how to get this to work because when I tried it earlier, just, I don't know, it took me nowhere, but what you could do is, if you're an RDO user and I'm an RDO user and you're yeah. my friend, yeah. we're connected, yeah. I can listen in on whatever you're listening to. That is cool. Yeah, it's I cool love for that. me, but what if you're listening to... I don't know. Well, we have to be friends. We have to be friends, but I mean, I'm listening in real time, so like, if you listen to a song, 
if you listen to a Katy Perry song and you like keep rewinding, because that would you, like, bother you and you would stop listening and you might unfriend me and you may never speak to me again. No, but I would know that you're doing that. I would know that you're really, really weird about that <laughs> Katy Perry song. Well, then don't, yeah. I, I like the idea. In fact, this was an idea I had years ago for a TV show. I wanted to have the whole th idea of the TV show, and this I've been pitching this for years, and we're actually kind of doing it now, but it was that you would look in, watch in on a bunch of people that you were very interested in as they prepared a TV show for that evening. And I was thinking like it was maybe like the screensavers. And so you could watch Kevin and Sarah and, and Morgan and Patrick doing the stuff they did during the day. You could have like a spy cam. But what I wanted to do was you could also listen to the music they were listening to. You could eavesdrop because each of them was iconic in some way. And right, right. So Patrick, you know he'd be listening to the, you know, Dropkick Murphy and that kind of stuff. <laughs> Kevin, I don't know what the hell he'd be listening to. But you could listen Mariah to their Carey. playlist, right? I love Mariah Carey. No, he doesn't listen to Mariah Carey. Loves her. Oh, I'm so Absolutely disappointed. Absolutely loves her. You're kidding. Yes. That is terrible. And you thought I was bad with Katy Perry. <laughs> well, you are. You're punishing him for not showing up on that twit. I know you are. I know you. I didn't even know about that. You should have been gone. I was gone, but I have, yeah. I was eavesdropping. That guy's kind of dead to me. Yeah, he should you, be. You don't show up to my twit, yeah, you're he was, over. He's dead to me. Pretty much, yeah. you know? You too cool for school? Mm -mm. No, you're not uh -uh. invited back to my school. No you've way. Been, uh -uh. You've been expelled. Uh-uh. Hey, so, uh, <laughs> you know what's actually coming soon? And I know some of you don't have Macs, so you're like, please stop talking about Mac apps because it's not the same thing as iPad apps. But for anybody who also has a Mac, as well as an iPad, and likes the Instacast uh, podcast app. Leo, do you use the Instacast I love app? Instacast. Yeah? You're, are they going to do a Mac app? They sure are. Oh, hallelujah, because, you know, we're really tied to iTunes. Most of, 90% of the people who listen to our shows after the fact mm -hmm. download it through iTunes. Right. Audio or video. And I'd love a bet, there should be a better way. And Instacast is so great on the iPad. That's great news. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited about it. In fact... If you look at the popular section on Instacast, they, you know, they change these uh, uh, somewhat frequently. Let's see where we are. We better be on here. It's all the five by five stuff. Why are they above us? How can anything be above us? Well, well we got Mac Break Weekly at number 31. That is a little. Well, it doesn't matter. Hey, who cares about popular lists anyway, huh? That's a little odd. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe they actually brought tears to my eyes. Oh, Leo, it's okay. You can have more whiskey after the show. Don't cry. You're really crying. Stop crying. Yeah, because we should be number one. Well, we were number one in our own hearts. It's <laughs> gotten so actually, weird. Actually, I'm crying about more. We're not going to do the show regularly at five, by the way. Absolutely mm. not. Not if you keep acting like this. So <laughs> actually, just a little whiskey went down. Right. <laughs> Right. It brought tears to my eyes. <laughs> so Instacast is coming to the Mac. We don't know exactly when. but That's really good news. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. Yeah, I, I am too. I think the more podcast options you have, the better, because then, then hopefully you watch or listen to more of our shows and everybody wins. One thing I have tested, I am excited about, it really does bring tears of happiness to my eyes, What's is that? the new Google Drive. Wait, this is the Google search. Where's my Google Drive? So Google Drive is an app that lets you get to your Google, it used to be Google Docs, they now yes. call it Drive. It's, it, it's the same idea. Which is very confusing so to you people. So you, know, you, have, you have documents, you have spreadsheets, right. you have... We use it like crazy, you use it for all the show rundowns. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's uh, on, on um, let's, uh, how do I search? There we go. If we go to, you can even, you can even look at our iPad Today rundown. Um, on many of our shows, for iPad Today, it's like, I'm kind of glancing at it. I'm, you know, I do most of all my rundown work beforehand, so I'm just sort of following along. Something like Tech News Today, we are in that, we're talking you, to each yeah, other, we're yeah, updating. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's very important, and I've never, ever been able to use, and this is, you know, this is just, we just decide to use Google Drive. We, we would have other options, but it's a very good real-time collaboration tool for a variety of people, and it's free. Uh, if we were using, uh, if I was trying to do the whole show on my iPad, couldn't do it. Even though we've had edit, editing capabilities, uh, if you if you access Google Docs or Google Spreadsheets from Safari in an iPad, you can technically edit. But anybody who's tried knows it's really clunky. You know, you press a cell. In fact, let's see if I have one open. I think is it I, easier to do Google the the word processor, or is that hard too? 
Is it just a spreadsheet that's hard? The spreadsheet is... Because I confess, I don't ever try to edit those, the spreadsheet... having had a bad experience. <laughs> I tried to open a Google Doc, and I got a, a street in Paris, Boulevard de Tours. Oh, you know why? You clicked the... I know what you've been up to. You're planning your trip, I'm young lady. i my trip. Ah, well, I thought I had it open. Anyway, what's nice is that in the spreadsheet view specifically, uh, in Google Drive, until today, you could look, but you couldn't touch. Meaning, you know, it was read only, not write. So, uh, you have all these tabs, you know, November 27th, this was the iPad Today rundown from, you know, yes, it doesn't matter, don't worry about it. Could you explain it. what a rundown is? Do people know what that is? I oh. think that's a TV term. Yeah, I guess it's that's It's like true. the schedule of stuff we're gonna talk about. Yeah, exactly. So Leo and I sit down, and it doesn't actually seem like we're prepared at all. And we're not. But that's by design, just because our rundown is is created in that way that makes I it seem really just kind of, you know. never read the rundown. No, you don't. Uh, but everybody knows that. Anybody who's uh, used to the show knows that. So you've got, you've got your little tabs at the bottom of the different rundowns on different days. Um, and beforehand, all I could see, you know, we see like audio, audio app, eavesdrop, Instacast. Now we're talking about Google Drive. In the past, all so I could do was see How? that. Yeah. yeah. So can now you, you just double click. All right. Now I say. If this is new, really? This they couldn't. I couldn't do this till now. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Now that's and it updates really quick. It's super easy. If I click once, I can. Uh, if I click and hold, I can get like. Um, is it sort of copy paste? Where's my copy paste? Huh? Oh, I see. I had to click out of that. So yeah, you can cut ah, or copy. Cool, cool, double cool. click. Just go ahead and edit. You're, edi you're editing down below, not within the cell itself. But that's fine. That's a Doesn't spreadsheet matter. meme. And really, I don't know. I mean, I'd still be somewhat scared about doing something like this live in real time for TNT. But most of you don't have to worry about that. I mean, this is way slicker than it was just just one day ago. Well, actually, just one eight days ago. So that's RDO. Yeah. That's Google Drive. And the third app was Nook. Yeah, Nook got it some accessibility upgrades. Now, Nook is Barnes & Noble e-reader right. app. Mm -hmm. I actually don't use it. I'm a Kindle uh, user, and so I use the Kindle app on the iPad. But uh, let's take a look at Nook. So Nook will look pretty much exactly the same to most people. What it now will support are a couple things for accessibility options. One is voiceover. So if you have voiceover turned on on your iPad, and that's something that if you go into settings, and you go into, come on, iPad, don't leave me hanging. Really? Gosh, our internet here. Oh, there it was. And you go into general, and then you go down to accessibility. You've got some uh, options here. VoiceOver is one of them. VoiceOver is that funny one where once it's on, then it sort of... It talks to you a lot. Yeah, exactly. So... Sitting, app switcher, Nook. Nook. Double tap to open. Nook. Nook, book page. Two finger swipe to read con book page. Two f greatly must throw them in the way of other rich men. And oh. lastly, it was so pleasant she at her time of life to be able to consign like her that. single daughters to the care of their sister that she might not be obliged to go into company now. more than she liked. Greatly must throw them in the way of other rich men. App switcher. Settings. Double tap to open. I've gotten somewhat better at this, Settings. but not Settings. that great. Heading. Voice S over. Settings. On. Voice over. On. Did you ch actually choose voice an Afrikaner off. voice? Yeah, I did. Okay. That was a long time ago, though. So if you, it, so the point, the point of all of that was, the Nook app did not actually support voiceover right. until now. That's good. So it's you about had, time. Yeah, if you, you, if you're like, I want it to be read to me, it wasn't possible. Now it is. If you thought, gosh, she was talking too fast, or that was sort of weird, you can change. You can change the accent, you can change the speaking rate, that sort of thing. Also, another accessibility option that you now have is in the Zoom area. What's cool about Zoom is once it's on, if you double tap with three fingers, you can kind of zoom in a little bit. And that's different than actually pinching. This is actually just, or, you know, or, or, or um, uh, making the text bigger. This is actually just zooming into a particular area. So if you go back to the Nook app, ooh, Come on now. <laughs> what was, oh, that was the Zoom. That was the yeah. Zoom. And you're like, well, you know, this, this all looks okay, but I wish it was a little bit closer. That's nice. Yeah, then you could do that. So that's actually, that's honestly, those are the big upgrades to the Nook app. But I know some people are out there saying, oh, this is great. This is actually makes it 
uh, a lot more accessible to me. So thought that we should talk about that as well. That's good. If yeah. you're a Nook, a Nook lover. That's right. I don't use the Nook app either yeah. uh, because it's sort of like it's Kindle or Nook, right? Right. It's already over Spotify. Right. It's tomato or tomato. Mm -hmm. It's apricot or apricot. 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 Tomato. You know what? I'm not going to fight with you. I know I'm right. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't say orange? Aren't you glad I didn't say banana? Mm -hmm. hey, so what do you do if up? you want to print? <laughs> <laughs> what up? What up? What up, Leo? I just, you, you know, know what? chilling, Printing. listening to Mariah Carey. Printing. Ain't that a B? It's so hard. Printing is hard. And, yeah. you know, I was glad Apple said, oh, you could print now from your iPad, but you have to have this certain kind of printer. And so it's got, limiting. So we found a really cool product. I want to read you an email, actually. This is from Lantronics. It's called uh, X Print Server. And I got an email because we've been talking about this. <clears throat> and I didn't ask her permission, so I'm just going to say her first name. She's in Texas. She says, hi, Sarah and Leo. Thank you so much for the information on the Lantronics X-Print server. I'm in my 14th year as an IT director in a school district, and I have never had anything work so seamlessly, just as advertised right out of the box. Wow. And this is unsolicited. The X-Print server started discovering our 24 printers from all over the school district, and within minutes, I was happily printing out test pages. Yippee, Sarah. Uh, I wish I could say more, and I don't, Sarah, if, if you say, oh, go say my name, I'm sorry, but I just want to make sure your privacy is protected. But I was so thrilled to read that. I got that today. That's so awesome. Lantronics, there are, you know, there's another company that makes a device that attaches to their printers that puts it on the network, and they charge a ton for it. And it doesn't work as well as this. This is absolutely the best way to do it. It lets you print right from the iOS native menu, so you don't have to buy any software, no apps. Uh, supports more than 4,000 top brand network printers. And if you have a USB printer, you're, you, you, know, you might have thought, I'm stuck, I can't print from my iPad to a USB printer. Now you can. Very simply, one X-Print server supports multiple printers and virtually unlimited iOS devices. You saw that she actually saw all the printers on the entire school district's network, 24 printers. So there's two versions. Do we have one? Do we have the Lantronics? Could you bring me? It's sitting over there. Is John oh, it's there? right. It's on the yeah, top I of Jammer show, B's I desk. Yeah, I want to show. Hey, Karsten, could Anyone? you bring me the Lantronics? It's on Jammer B's desk. I just want to show you how small this is. The home edition, it's $99. And that's plenty for any home. Eight USB printers or two net and two network printers. Then there's the office edition for people uh, like our, our uh, correspondent. It's $199 and supports eight USB and unlimited network printers. Means your USB printers can be shared with all users over a network. So that's it's got an added benefit. I mean, it makes a USB printer a network printer. This is it. It's that's how small it is. You see, it has a little power supply. An Ethernet jack, a USB jack. This is so cool. Great for home, great for office. Uh, works with the monthly function printers. We use it with our big Epson. It's fantastic. And by the way, we've got a special offer for the month of December. Listen to this. When you use the offer code HOLIDAY2012, you'll get 20% off your order. That is a great deal. xprintserver.com slash twit. And don't forget, at checkout, the, uh, the offer code is holiday two zero one. Two, holiday 2012 to save 20% off your order. You know, it's nice to know how people in the real world are like, oh thrilled. my gosh, this made this so much easier. And the folks at Lantronics uh, just really do a great product and a great job. The expert server. And thank you for writing to us, Sarah. We appreciate it. We got an email from Mike in Frankfurt. That's in Germany. Yes, I've heard of it. Yes, it's where I the have... Frankfurter came from. We... Is that true? No, probably not. Goodness gracious. I've, act... I've never been there. I'd, I'd love to one I day. I have. I've been to the airport. You... You've been to the airport. Doesn't count if that's the only place that you've been. Okay. You can't say that you've been. I did have a hot dog there, though, just so I could say I had a Frankfurter. I had a Frankfurter. Was Frankfurt. it good? Yeah. In the, yeah? Yeah, actually, it was really good. Well, you know, I'm going to go to Belgium one of the days where I'm in France. I you just should have, have a waffle. I'm going to <laughs> have a Belgian you know, waffle. You know, the Why Belgians not? invented French fries. I have heard yeah, that. Yeah, you should. I'm, I'm not kidding. They also invented really good beer. V the best beer in the world, in my I'm going to go, go nuts. So where, you're going to take a just day trip from Paris? I'm going to take a day trip. Good for you. Two hours to Brussels. Is that all on a high-speed yeah, train, probably? I think I don't even think it's two. That's great. Yeah, no, I'm super excited about it. We're going to have waffles and beer. It's going to be great. Let's all meet in the town square. Okay. So, Mike from Frankfurt in Germany. Are you going to Bruges reality. or Brussels? I think Brussels. Bruges is a little bit farther. Bruges is prettier, though. Well, Brussels maybe I'll do kinda... that. How bad can it be? 
Well, if you go to Brussels, you got to go to see the mannequin piss. What if, what if I go to Antwerp and buy some diamonds? <laughs> I'm just going to buy just You don't jewels. have to because Tom Shane does that for you. Oh, yeah. He cuts out the middleman and passes the savings He's on to you. He's a diamond importer. So Mike in Frankfurt asks, why is it a swipe to the right to go forward in something like a video? But with books or magazines or news, it swipes to the left. I know it's a holdover from the paper media days, but when will Apple oh, He's move? wrong. It swipes to the right in both cases. That You just did swipe to the left. That's swiping to the left. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, see? Difference. Oh, so you mean from the left to the right or from the right to the left? Exactly. But you don't, do you swipe videos? No, you just drag the little thing but to the right. What he's saying is you go to the right because you're going forward in time. He's saying, when will Apple move into the 21st century and swipe in the same direction for everything? He thinks, I, I guess, the books on iPad are too skeuomorphic for Mike. I, I think... I feel like that would be very confusing. I think it's the right way and it's going to stay that way. Yeah. Well, they did reverse the mouse. It makes sense to me. And you, I you stopped caring after you a week. Scroll, you're scrolling a video. You move it to the forward in the video. Well, no. But when you're turning you a page... You just went backwards. I well, because I'm flipped what... around from you. If oh, I sat I see. over here... Okay, all right. Forward. All right. You're trying to be... Okay. But, uh, and then... I think this all makes sense, and I think if you change it, it's going to. Of course, remember Apple changed the scroll direction on the mouse, can and that you, threw everybody. Can you imagine on. reading a book like turning it? Yeah, you know, no. you're in iBooks, and you're like, but, the next well, page. Uh, uh, ooh, ooh, ah, I got ooh, a counter ah, argument ah, okay. because Kindle, and I'm sure many other books have, besides the page turn mechanism, have a slider. And how do you go forward in you a book when you're forward. using the slider? You slide it forward, but just as you that's do video. An option, not a commitment. You have the slider. What? It's a nice to have options, right? I think the slider goes the way it should and the page turn goes the way it should and let's stop messing with it. All right, Mike, you've been vetoed. I'm sorry, buddy. I hope you enjoy Frankfurt this holiday season. <laughs> He's German. They're very, uh, very literal minded. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have another email from R.T. Cregan, I hope I'm saying that right, in Brooklyn, uh, who says, uh, I enjoyed the show 124, that was the one that Eileen Rivera was on, uh, because she talked about the fascinating world of Android. Can we just stop talking about Eileen being Don't on the show? Don't be so jealous. She, she gave a breath of fresh, you know, actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you, we got a couple of angry emails from people because people How get angry. How dare you have an Android person on the show? Well, one, one... I was one of the people who wrote the emails, so you can take one you, off. It was, the whole thing was, here's my... How dare, here's, how dare you have... The point was, here's where iOS excels, and here's where iOS can improve. It's right. good for us to know how certain iOSs oh, are better. You know, I've, I will you defend that to is. the death, because we do yeah. the same thing on Mac Break Weekly. We talk about the competition, because it's part of... How, you know, this is you're not working in a vacuum. You got to talk about yeah. all the other stuff too. We had one woman. She didn't write a nasty email. It was not nasty, but she just said, you know what? Next time, why don't you let me know when the actual show starts and you stop talking Ooh. about Android? Oh. Give me a timestamp or something. And I went, huh? That okay, hurts. sorry. We're just trying to be creative. But anyway, this is a this is a different point of view. Uh, uh, RT says, I work with a woman in a, in a USPS sorting facility. We work nights. She's not a techie. Uh, she she got an Android phone from her son. Every night she talks on it, she recharges it, she plays games, she listens to music, and then on many nights. This is why the mail is not going through. By the way, I just want to point out everybody's playing games. She's supposed on their to be devices. sorting the mail. Well, listen, they work nights. All right, you want to just you it's know slow. You want to yeah. There's not you, a lot of mail at midnight. You, right, you want to stay busy. <laughs> she says on many nights though, uh, the woman comes over and says. Can you call me on my phone? I think something's not working. I look at the screen and I see the jet plane icon and I say, you've put it into travel mode again. Why? Why? She says, or he says, I don't know if you're a man or a woman. I'm sorry. I know that your coworker is a woman. Uh, this person says, thanks to your show, I know why. Because my friend keeps uh, going to the Android shortcut and accidentally cutting herself off from her carrier on a regular basis. Oh, she's not using an iPhone. No, she's using an Android uh, phone. I missed that part. Yeah. Yeah, it is very easy to ac accidentally go into airplane right. mode. Right, and Android. that was something that actually when Eileen, wonderful, beautiful, talented Eileen, who's not as beautiful as you, but very she nice, better not be. uh, was sitting here, I was like, you know, it sure would be nice not to have to go into my settings every time I want to change my Wi-Fi network. Yeah. But it sounds like sometimes having stuff buried in settings can work for you. Yeah. Because it could also work again. It was just too easy. 
I always want to make you work for it so that you don't end up cutting yourself off from your carrier. Yes, you should have to. And work going for into it. travel mode. Yes. That's should, interesting. You I, should have to really try. I never thought of that, but, I, but it ac would be a negative. I, I mean, I've done that by accident, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's, if you know the operating system, you could probably cut down on that stuff. But uh, uh, Cregan says, it's one more reason for iPhone users or iPad users, of course, to shake our respective heads and give a little smug smile. I don't know. They don't really like it when we do smug smiles. The rest of the world doesn't really like that very no. much. <laughs> but I know what you mean. And we got an email, from, or we got a voicemail, rather, from a man who declined to leave his name. But he has a request for a very specific kind of app. Hi, guys. Um, do you guys know a good app um, dealing with Ohm's Law? either on the iPad or other Android device, because I'm using stuff, trying to use it for school, basically, like circuit, circuit analyzing stuff, uh, you know, finding voltage and all that stuff, um, and solving for unknowns. But uh, if you guys get a chance, wow. please let me know later. That's a great question. I know. If I'd read the rundown, I could have done some research. Well, no, I figure, you know, we can have uh, the hive mind help I, us out and we I can like, address well, it. I like, well, and we have a lot of hams watching because Ham Nation's coming up next. Yeah. And that's exactly the kind of people who are interested in analog electronics. I did enough research to know that, I mean, if you just type in Ohm's Law into the App Store, you get a lot of stuff. And some of it's free and some of it's not. And it's, it's a little bit overwhelming. I did find an app called Circuit Playground. Oh, that it, sounds like fun. Yeah, doesn't it? It's two ninety nine. I have not downloaded it because I thought, if anyone in chat is like, this is an amazing app, please do, I could pass that along to you. What I do know is that of the apps, it oh, has... Oh, this is from Adafruit. This is great. I, you know oh, what? really? Yeah. Deal. Um, Buy uh, it. Of, of the apps, and this is actually just showing me the rating for the current version because it was updated recently, it has like 70 positive reviews, I actually which is know this more program. reviews than any other app yeah. has that's in the same category. It's, and a, a, little, lot of, it's a little basic, okay. but it's, it sounds like for our caller, that's probably what he, what he wants. And Adafruit... It's a, yeah, it sounded like he was doing you know, some calculating, yeah. some inputting of numbers. We've had uh, Lady Ada on uh, triangulation. Oh, Adafruit is a wonderful company run by women. They sell kits, electronics kits, mm -hmm. so people can build you know, clocks and all sorts of stuff. It's oh, kind goodness. of Heath kit for the maker generation. I love Adafruit, and I, I'm sure this is exactly what he's looking for. I do notice, though, if you search for electronics calculators in the store... There are many other choices as well. Well, that's the thing. So that's why I went through and said, okay, well, obviously I don't know anybody who's left reviews, or I don't think I do. But of the reviews, you know, there'd be one with three reviews, and two right. of them were one star, and one was like, best app ever. Right. Eh, you know, it just seems shady. Circuit Playground had a lot of very good reviews, and the most reviews by far. And a lot of people said, this is the one you want. Some of that other stuff is a bunch of baloney. There are a lot of resistor calculators. There's an ohms calculator. Um, that's, you know, the reason is it's probably a fairly easy thing to write. Yeah. And so a lot of people writing their first app might might whip something like that together. I think the Circuit Playground probably is a good start, yeah. You know, Chad suggests Wolfram Alpha for, for a lot of this stuff. You know, a lot of it is in Wolfram Alpha, yeah. actually, yeah. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a good call, Chad. Or as we say on the East Coast, Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha? Yeah. That's not what the East Coast people sound like. <laughs> Wolfram? That's almost <laughs> like a Midwestern thing. I don't know. She was mocking me before the show began. She was mocking me. Well, because you said... Because I said horror. You said horror. I went, horror? Well, How do you spell that? H-A-A-A-A-R-O-R? Yeah, it's my horror? app cap, and I think you're going to enjoy it. I so think I'm there. going to as well. Uh, but first, I want to remind everybody... Uh, thank you, everybody, for who submitted questions and comments and all that good stuff in this show. Um, I want to make sure that you all, uh, if you want to contribute to the show, know how to do it. You have some options. You can write us at iPad Today at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail. The number is 757-504-IPAD. You don't have to leave your name like our, our wonder, or the wonderful gentleman just a couple minutes ago didn't, but you, know, you say whatever you want. Just try to keep it to 30 seconds or less. You'll get our Google uh, Voice uh, Mail, uh, Google Mail Voice Inbox. So no one's ever going to answer, but we definitely do listen to every single one. Uh, and you can also send us a video. So if you ever feel brave, you want to ask your question, <laughs> point a camera at yourself. <laughs> that's good too. <laughs> he won't laugh at you. What? Right? You no, I'm laughing at, at uh, Dr. Phil. Oh. 
<laughs> Dr. Phil. I'm watching TV. I'm sorry. I got a little distracted. I just, you know, all I ask is for an hour plus of your time. <laughs> An hour plus, three days a week. <laughs> I had to take a break, you know, like the Postal Service. I, I have to stop working every 15 minutes. What, I, I don't even understand. Wait, I'm, you're looking at In an fact, iPad. We you're not should, looking we at should, a television. Yes, it's my personal television. She, we should get the lady, She because it does run on Android, the, the lady that works at the post office, Slingbox. Because then she wouldn't have to be doing these dumb games. She could be watching her TV. Is that what you're doing there? Are you watching? Yeah, TV I was. I was watching Chad? Slingbox over on Jeez, over here too. Chad, can you pay attention for a minute? It's just so easy. <laughs> so here's the deal. You get. And by the way, the new Slingbox is out. It's beautiful. The Slingbox 500, just a gorgeous piece of work. It has Wi-Fi built into it, so you don't have to be right next to the network. But you do want to be in your TV home theater setup, right? And you connect your DVR, you connect your satellite or cable box, your DVD play player if you want, whatever you have. In your home theaters. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? I'm, I'm barely even listening to you. I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. I'm just sitting here quietly. You're laughing at me. I well, see you're you mocking little, me. You're just insane. You're insane. I'm sounding a little like Foster Brooks right now. It's okay. I understand. It's okay. It's all right. No, you get excited about Slingbox. So I think you hook it up in there, and then you hook it up to the internet, and now you have password-protected access to your home theater anywhere you go on the internet. And now you can use a laptop. But the best way to do it, I really think, is with the iPad app. Because then your iPad is now a full high-def television set wherever you go. And it could be in your house, by the way. If you just want to go down the hall, you can watch your TV from your sling box wherever you are. But it's also great at the ballpark, uh, if you're waiting in line at the DMV, if you're working in the postal service. Anytime you want to watch TV, you can with Slingbox. I want you to visit slingbox.com slash twit to find out a whole lot more. Or go pick it up. Just buy it. Don't even think about it. Just buy it. Uh, the new Slingbox 500 with Wi-Fi built-in, HDMI connectivity, full 1080p is available at Best Buy, Amazon, or Fry's. Slingbox.com slash twit to learn more. It, it's what the iPad's been waiting for. It turns your iPad into a personal television. Yes, I your own it. television. I love All it. All your stuff. App cap time. App cap time. So. Uh, me, I'm, I'm on the USS Iowa. Yeah, actually, that was given to me. I the love Iowa it. is a um, <laughs> uh, retired naval vessel. What in the? Is that a Bieber wig? <laughs> yeah, I look, like it look, look like Justin, don't I? Think I? You've got it upside down. You've got it backwards. <laughs> How does it look like that? <laughs> That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. You know, I told him that. That's, that's downright upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> you frighten me. I don't even like the way you look with black hair. Anyway. Yeah. See? What? I went into DMV and for the driver's license, and they said, what color hair? And I said, black. You said brown. Anyway. And they um, said, whatever, we don't care. They, apparently, ahead. they didn't care. The lady didn't okay. laugh, smirk, or anything. She yeah. said... Yeah, you got brown hair. It looks like brown to me. Well, that's very nice. So the USS Iowa, one of the legendary uh, ships uh, from, I think, from the Vietnam era. Um, and it is, uh, it, this this guy it was an engineer, and he worked on the engines, and then you can actually go on and see it. It's really neat. Super so, cool. Yeah, I love I it. Love it was it. very nice of him to bring me that hat. This is awesome. And I was wearing it uh, uh, about six months ago, and the guy said, well, did you serve on the Iowa? I said, no, I wish I did. This is a, I explained the story to him. He said, I was on the Iowa. Uh, so that's kind of it's kind of a neat uh, story. Well, especially because if you had, then maybe you guys would have known each other, right. known uh, similar folks. Yeah. Hey, so this is the part of the show where Leo and I wear hats, or in today's case, a very frightening wig. This is a hat. It's hat-ish. It's my rain hat. It sort of makes you look like a beetle, and I don't mean like the musician. I mean like a. a Do you insect. think I have it on wrong? Yeah, that's how you're supposed to. Now you actually look like a musician beetle. <laughs> You can either be an insect or you can be a man with a guitar. <laughs> I don't think that was... I don't That's, think this this, is, this what, is the right way to yeah, work? Yeah, yeah, it is. You look like one of the Fab Four. I do. Yeah, oh my God. I do love... Now, now I really like yeah. this. Oh, yeah. You All are, right, you do your app cap and I'll talk about mine in a bit. So mine, this is awesome. Uh, at the beginning of the show, I mentioned that winter is coming. And then you went on a tangent about Australia. But what I was talking about... And anybody who watches Game of Thrones, oh, winter or reads is coming. Books, winter knows is that coming. That's the, the line. Season three is coming in yeah. March, and I'm already super excited. about Is it coming in March? It. Oh, I gotta hurry because I'm reading the book. I like to read the book before it before comes out. Before the, yeah. before the, um, do, I mean, do they do they pretty much keep 
The first book is sort of like oh, yeah. the first season. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. That's yeah. nice. Well, but I don't want to run out of seasons. I want it to go forever. Oh, believe me. It's, it goes on forever. Well, he, he's still it's running It's five volumes. I think a sixth is on its yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the official companion to the books. Uh, now, this is not the show. Fire. Yeah, because it's not the people from the show. No, no. This is sort of like illustrations of Sansa and, and, and Eddard. So this is the companion to the books. However... I have not read any of the books, but I'm extremely, extremely enthusiastic about the show, and it really helps me keep people straight. I would and get be aware though, because uh, a couple of the characters are renamed in the TV show from the book, so this may you may find a little confusion in it. A, a little confusion, yeah. perhaps that's true. Here's what's really neat about it. Now, if if for any reason you're extremely sensitive about spoilers, I will try not to spoil anything. But what happens is is that I've gone ahead and unlocked. Um, my, 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 my purchases, which allows me to just get all sorts of information and maps and that sort of thing. What I can do is I have something called spoiler protection here, and I can slide the slider based on what books I've read. So, Leo, you're getting through book three, right? You might not want to see stuff that book three would reveal when you're sort of clicking around and looking at Winterfell and this and that. So you could say, I want my slider to be right after book two, because that's all I want to know. Oh, that's I don't want to know what happens. That's so smart. Does, isn't that great? So let's just go to zero spoilers, right? So I, I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody, and I just go ahead and say, all right, well, I, you know, I, I love this. Oh, I love this pick. I'm going to get this. Isn't this the funnest? This is so cool. Look, so if you go and to, you kind of need this, because there are lots of characters. This right. Is a, very elaborate uh, book. So we got Dragonstone, for example. Yeah. You know, we've all we've all heard of. Well, you might not have heard of Dragonstone, but Dragonstone is a place, and it gives you some background oh, about what's neat. up, right? Oh, Dragonstone neat. is is in the south versus the north. Anybody who's familiar knows that. You know, if you go to the maps, you got the north, um, where you know the wall is and all sorts of stuff. You click on this, and you go, "Ooh, Winterfell." Okay, yeah, Winterfell. Let's, let's hear more about this and how it came to be versus the south. You know, or it's a little bit drier, and you got King's Landing and this kind of stuff. I mean, I could I could look at this all day long and click on it. So this is what I know. If I went back to you know, if you go to People, for example, and you go to you know, you go to Jon Snow, I have um, a little bit of information about him. But He's a not, bastard. Well, he okay, yeah, that's true. You find that out pretty pretty early on. Um, you find out a little bit about yeah, him. Yeah, because you've got the spoilers turned off. You because can't know anything. Because I have anything. the spoilers turned off. Don't turn off. them on. Don't. Why? Don't. Why? Because you'll spoil it. Well, but if you just look away for a second, I at least just want to show people that after you turn on, like after book one, you can go ahead then and go back to Jon Snow. And there'll be more. And there'll be more. But don't read it. Yeah, don't read it if you're if you you know if you don't want to see. If I click on Jon Snow again, now oh, I've now got some lots. information. We know a lot about it. Yeah, him. because that you know, it's it's more of just you know, it's a really good sort of encyclopedia. It's a good resource. So I, you, this would be totally useless to you if you don't like the book or the show or both. Somebody said if you need a app to understand the book, it's too complicated. It is very complicated, but that's the appeal of it. You really are in a world. It's, the, geeking out on Game of Thrones is part of the oh, fun I love for it. me. Oh, I yeah, love I mean, it. do you ever read the Game of Thrones wiki? No. Oh, it's, I mean, it's great stuff. Now, is that, that's based on the TV show? It's based on the TV show. Okay. And there might be one for each, but the one that I've been reading is based right. on the TV show, and it's very helpful, because sometimes you're like, I don't know, that, that guy's name is, are they, don't they have the same, I don't get it, are they related? So you've got people, you've got houses, you know, you've got House uh, Baratheon, you've got House Lannister, you've got House Stark, you've got House Tully, Tyrell, all of that stuff, so you get a little bit more, okay, who's who, you know, who are the Greyjoys again? You've got your people. You've this got your is places. Great. I want this badly. So many places that Love I haven't it. even gotten Love to yet. It. You've got your maps, and the whole thing. How much? Is gosh, is it free? But is then it, there's an added. Yeah, it's free, but you pay. Oh, for that's right. Additional. Yeah, I paid. I think I I paid four ninety nine to unlock all of. All books. of it. Oh, yeah. well, that's not bad. Yeah, so I think it's one ninety nine each, and if you want to just do it in one fell swoop. Um, it's yeah, it's five bucks. I do totally encourage you it. to read the book before you watch the show. The show is great, but I got so much more out of it knowing. I don't know. You didn't read the book, so you understood. I, ha I haven't. Um, MG is reading the reading. Love it. Well, he's still on book one, uh, but he he Audible. really likes it. Audible. Yeah, I said that's a really good idea. Yeah. The show is my favorite thing. All I want to do is just listen to the theme song. Yeah, the theme excited. song. I know on your new stereo. Oh, it's, yeah. oh, we crank that thing up. Yep. It is obnoxious. I saw you actually posted on Path. <laughs> it's got one of the best starting 
uh, sequences of Never fast forward through it. And I do you sit know, there patiently Did and you I watch know it. this? Each one is each week is different. Each week is different because yeah. they're in different places. Yeah. Gives yeah. you a little bit of a hint of where hint. we're going. Yeah. No, it's so great. So that's my app pat app cap pick George R. R. Martin's A World You're of so Ice excited. and Fire of Game of Thrones You're Guide. So I know excited. I don't like many things in this world. Game I of know. Thrones is one of the She's few really, things I do like really a lot. Person. Mom, you gotta start watching Game of Thrones. She doesn't watch? Well, she doesn't yet. She's gonna watch now. I know. I gotta well, talk now, to you. Just buck up. Yeah. You can buy the first season on iTunes. Still. So it's the USS app. Iowa, which whose hat you are wearing, yes. they call it the Battleship of Presence. Actually, it was commissioned in 1940. I didn't realize it was that old. It was in service through the 90s. Uh, and you can go visit it in Los Angeles now, PacificBattleship.com, if you want to cool. get tickets. Oh, cool. And it really is a museum, uh, just an amazing uh, thing to see. Uh, some amazing stories. The USS Iowa. Uh, it's a museum now in Los Angeles. Neato. Ba again, PacificBattleship.com. Now let me show you my app, and this is a creepy app. Do you know? Do you know what Slender Man is? No. It's it's a you know urban legend story, kind of ghost story about a guy with no face who kind of. But the kids have really oh. glommed on to it because it's a game, right, Chad? Uh, well, was it was started so it's so urban legends that tend to start you know in. IRL. This is an urban legend that started on the internet oh, I didn't on the that. Something Awful forums and then moved to okay. 4chan and, and, and it's eats, just become... He eats you or something. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to meet this guy yeah, in, in a scary forest. And so there's some great games where you have the Slender Man game where you got a flashlight and you're searching for him and you're collecting information but he sneaks up on you and, he, and then you go white noise. So this is, the Slend this is from Slender Man. This is an augmented reality shooter, the horror augmented reality shooter. Now, I'm gonna, I've got it on my iPad mini. Works on iPhone, iPad, and iPad mini. What we're gonna do is we're gonna airplay this because it, you gotta see what I'm seeing. Oh, and you have to move it around. Yeah, so okay. I'm gonna start, you could turn it on now. Are you seeing it or do mm, I have to? Not yet. I gotta go back into airplay. Let me, let me make sure that uh, maybe airplay got uh, turned off. Oh. Sometimes that happens. Where it just kind of loses its... Yeah, it did. It lost its brick house. Well, it's, it's because... So there we go. Yeah. There you go. I see it now. Yeah. So let me launch it again. This is uh, the uh, horror augment... I think it's called uh, Slender Man... Slender Man Legend, Legend Horror Augmented Reality Shooter. Shooter. It's got a long and it name. It rolls off the tongue. Okay, I'm going to click start game. Okay. Now, I, I'm going to be looking through the camera. Okay, now you see I have some guns. I have a... Uh, Shotgun. Okay. I have a regular gun, uh, but the th and there's Sarah Lane. Oh my god! But I'm not going to shoot her because she's a good me. person. Yeah. But I'm looking because Slender Man. Oh! Ah! Oh! Oh my gosh, that is scary. That scared you, didn't it? Yeah. It's he showed up. Come on, shoot! Them. I got to shoot him. Oh. Um. He. So you got to what? It's actually a terrifying. Uh, yeah! Ah! Because he keeps, he keeps. No! No! Slender Man's Save coming! Me. I'm out of, I'm out of ammo! Shoot! Oh gosh, that was close. See? So he keeps emerging. Well, my God. I mean, when do you win? You just oh, play this forever? You win when Slender Man eats your face because. What? He's a bad, bad man. This actually is pretty cool. <laughs> you can't shoot See, me. See, you can't I shoot. You can't shoot real people. Unkillable. So this is um, that's it. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I'm sh oh, see, he's getting me. I'll let I'll let him get me. Get yeah. See what happens when you die. Will he actually jump through the iPad Mini and kill you? He actually, I will actually die. Oh my gosh. Well, Leo, this has been so fun. Yeah. So it's been really fun work. Ah! And that's it for this edition of iPad Today, everybody. That app is 99 cents, by the way. Uh, you can reach us at iPad Today at twit.tv. And um, I'll be I don't think anybody oh, with hey. hair this good should die. No, no. We'd miss you too much. <laughs> it's just so beautiful, you know? We can't lay you to rest. Not with a head of hair like that. It's so shiny. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a slender man in the chat room. I got to get him. I got to get him. There you go. The chat room was full of slender men. You just can't shoot anything but the Slender Man? No. Well, no. You wouldn't want to. Well, I just, I don't Only know. Only Slender Man is dangerous. In a, in, a, in a sad way. So this is, a, that's 99 cents, by the way. Yeah. Um, and again, if you want to search for it, because I had a little problem earlier, Slender Man <sighs> Legend Horror Augmented Reality Shooter. I think if you search for Slender Man Legend, you'll be fine. But that actually is it for this edition of iPad Today. Leo, this has been really fun. I, I I enjoyed it so much, I'd almost just like to come back here tomorrow and do another show. Let's. Okay. 
Let's. As long as there's whiskey, I'm here. Yeah, you'll be drinking earlier, but Here's sure. Here's to you. Well, that, and there is nothing left. So oh, my goodness, you must be drunk. Okay, thanks everybody for watching. See you next time on iPad Today. Oh. Oh.